Today's project is a do-it-yourself resin art piece. We're going to make a geode and look at this beauty. I used a lot of earth tones and I am thrilled with the products and the effects that I got from them. Let me show you how I went about it and I'm going to teach you how you can make one too. Hi everybody, it's Janet here for Moon Cusser Art. We're going to be doing a geode piece today. I like to do my geodes on panels. So I have this one all prepped and ready to go. It's a wood panel, so it's not going to flex. Geodes can be kind of heavy, so you want to use something that's not going to flex underneath the weight um, of what you're putting on top. I'm also going to do clean sides on this one, and you can see everything's already spray painted. I primed the board, and then it's been top coated in a off-white color. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it, so any of the transparent colors that I use will shine right through there. I'm going to show you how I do the taping. So we'll do that. And I've also got all my PPE, my personal protection ready. I like to use nitrile gloves. I have a full face respirator mask that I will wear. Got my fan ready in the window. Just in case of fire, I have fire extinguishers. You never know. I'll show you what I've got laid out here and let's get started getting the tape on the edges for our geode. Okay, so on the sides, what I like to do is I like to tape them off completely, but when I put that tape, this is my go-to tape. This is uh, the 3M, the um, Edge Lock tape. They have all different names for it now. It used to be called Edge Lock. Now I think they call it Sharp Lines. Anyway, it's painter's tape, and this works really well for me. So I like to cover all the sides, but if I put that up there, you can see that there's just a little bit that's going to be left exposed. So this one, I don't know, it's a little more than one inch, and that one, that's way too short. So we got to go for the big guns. All right, so when I say we're going to go for the big guns, we're going to go for a very wide tape, All right? So this one, I think it's like an inch and a half. It's got to be wider than that because I don't know what that is. Anyway, we, we can figure it out. <laughs> so you can see now that it's going to be covering the entire side, and that's what I want. I want to cover the entire side because... I want to leave that on there the whole time I'm working on the piece to protect it to get those clean edges, okay? So, that means if we're going to do that, I'm going to need to prop this up to make sure that I keep it off the tabletop. So we go like that. And... And I'm going to start working the tape around the edges of the board. Now this is going to take a little bit of time because I want to be really precise. I want it to come right on that edge. It's a very nice sharp edge and I want to keep it like that. So I'm just going to be bringing it right to the top of that side. And it's going to take me a little bit of time. So... That's basically it, and I'm going to put you on fast forward. All right, so I stopped right there. Because what will happen with your tape, especially when you're wrapping around corners, this is something you need to watch for. Your tape actually can flex and stretch. So when I was wrapping around that corner, I could see that I was getting a flex in there. I'll pick it up and show you. So right here, if I keep that tight on there, right there 
it's just under my edge. So what I want to do is make sure again, it's it. if I try to ease it in the corner, that's going to create a weak spot where I can actually get resin coming in underneath that corner. And I don't want that. So I'd rather break my tape and start again and make sure that it's consistent around there. So that's why I did that. See right there? Whoops. Right there. I've got a little flex in the tape. Okay? So that's the kind of stuff you got to watch out for. So the tape is now on. I've overlapped it here just a little bit, just not, not much. And now I like to use, this is just a Sharpie marker. It's made out of plastic. And I like to use this because it's not gonna scar anything. It's soft enough. And I'm going to rub this flat edge here on the surface of the tape. And this is called burnishing. So rubbing it like this warms up the tape and I always start in the middle and work to the outsides just like that. Okay. And then I can wrap that tape around the edge just like that. And by doing that, I'm checking my edges, making sure I don't feel any tape sticking up. And then I move on to my next edge. Now here's where I restarted my tape. So now I'm going to take it and just wrap it around this way. Let that lay on there. Okay. And that way, again, it's like I said, if, if I have a, a spot where I'm trying to ease that into the corner, that can give me a problem. So I'd rather break my tape and start over and make sure that I'm getting it nice and tight on there. So start in the middle. I'm rubbing right along that edge there. And I'm just burnishing that down, warming it up, and it gives it a really good tight seal. I wanna push my tape starts and goes this way, so I wanna do it that way to make sure that it lays down flat here. And then just wrap it around, just like that. Again, because this is gonna be a geode, I'm gonna put another layer of tape and I'm going to build a dam. Now I don't want to go. So here's my tape edge here. I need to go in the opposite direction now. All right. And same thing. I want to watch my corners because I don't want to flex it. So let's start in closer here. And I'm just going to raise this up. Doesn't have to be a lot because it's not going to be really deep or anything. That's about, well, I don't think it's even a half inch. So you can see the shadow line there. Maybe not with my arm there. So you can see, see the shadow line? It's not much. All right, All right. so I'm going the opposite direction because when I do go to pull the tape off, if I have it going, if I put it on the same way, when I go to pull that off, it'll actually pull this off with it too. But if I do it in the opposite way, it's not going to pull that off. So the same process, going to go all the way around. Want to watch the flexing of my tape. I want to try to avoid that. And I want it all to be just about the same size. 
Doesn't have to be perfect. And then, here's my last little trick for you on my tape. I like to fold it back where it's beginning. And then that way, you can see it doesn't match up in the height, but that's all right. I don't care about that. I do want that to seal nice. So now, by doing a fold back, now I have a handy dandy little flap that I can grab so that when I'm ready to bring that edge off and let the resin roll over the sides, I've got to grab. All right, there you go. Same thing, gonna burnish it down to make sure it's tight. There's all the colors. And again, it's a lot of colors. Don't know if I'm going to use them all. Sometimes things change. So let's get started. I have to draw out my pattern and I'll bring you back. All right, I've drawn on my lines and it's kind of hard to see them. Didn't go uh, too crazy on my lines because, you know, a lot of this work is going to be done freehand, just pouring as I want to pour. Oh, I've developed a couple of clusters on the board and I'm going to start setting my points so that I can get them mounted in there. So let's move on to that. I'm going to use a product here that's made by Pebio. It's called CERN Relief and it comes in these little applicator tubes. You cut the tip off and it creates a nice little point. And you just lay this down so it's creating a dam barrier for me where I'm going to be having these crystals sitting in a puddle of resin. That'll hold the resin back and it works like a charm. I love this stuff. It is handy dandy and it only takes about an hour to dry and you're ready to go. For this geode, I'll be using the Counterculture DIY Artist's Resin. I mixed up two and a half ounces and I'm mixing in some Pearl X. This is their antique bronze. And I also have some chunky glitter that I put into some of the resin here. Now this resin is very thick and I wanted to see what kind of effects I got with working on a geode. I like to put a couple of drops of 99% alcohol into any of the powdered pigments that I use and that tends to have it um, give off some nice little effects within the resin. Now this is sped up and I'm pouring from a paper cup. I pinch it and make a little spout but this resin is really thick so pretty much where you put it it's going to sit and we fill in those rings that were previously made. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some of that chunky glitter. There's no tint or pigment added to it. It's just a real heavy-handed batch of glitter in there. So it really, uh, I was hoping to get it to sit and let some of that color shine through from the bottom. And then I just kind of take the popsicle stick and just let it kind of kiss up to that antique bronze that's laying there and it stays within those boundaries from that Pebio CERN relief. I'm going to start laying the crystals in and you know I'm just kind of choosing them as I go and filling them into those rings and then we're going to let it sit and cure overnight. Looks good. Well it's the next morning and I'm back at the board with my Pebio CERN Relief. And again, I've got those pencil drawn outlines for my geode shape. So I'm just going to use that CERN Relief and outline it. This time I'm using the gold color and let that dry. I've made up some more of the counterculture resin and I wanted to show you this because it's been on my shelf for almost a year and look at how crystal clear that is. 
Here I've got some black diamond pigments. I love their pigments. They blend in really well. And this is going to be used for the base where I insert my glass. So I'm mixing it in. And then I add a couple of drops of 99% alcohol. I find that that helps to ensure that there aren't any spots that didn't blend well. And you can see this is sped up again, but I'm just laying down a ring following the outline that I drew with the Pebeo CERN relief. And it really does a super, super job of holding back the resin. Just filling those in and creating a little bit of interest and a flame torch because you don't want to burn your tape. Now here's another little pearl of wisdom for everybody. You can see that the gold overflowed the banks of that CERN relief. So I'm putting some alcohol. This is just 70%, uh, sorry I didn't make it into the shot. And I put it on a Q-tip and then I take that Q-tip and I get right where it overflowed and I just rub it along. So that's soaked in the alcohol and the alcohol removes, look at that, gone takes that right off of my top and it's not a big deal but I wanted to stop and share that with you because there are times where you know maybe you're working along and you get some resin in a spot that you don't want to now again my surface top for this artwork it's on a board and it's very smooth and putting the alcohol onto that q-tip it just allows me to wipe it completely clean. There's no residue left on the board. And it just, you know, it's one of those little tricks that depending on where you need it, it might come in handy. So I hope you guys find that another one of my great tips. It's been an hour and the resin has started to firm up and I'm placing the reflective glass almost like a mosaic style. So this is quarter inch and some chunks are bigger than others. So I kind of spread them around so that I get even. This took me about an hour and a half to lay them all in, but it was worth it. Well guys, it's the next day and I'm batching up some more resin using the Resin Art Galaxy Diamond. This is butterscotch and I'm getting pretty heavy handed with the pigment in there. This is about two and a half ounces of resin and just look at how nicely the dry pigment mixes in there. I transfer it over to a paper cup so that I can do my spout pours and I just do a ring around the cured resin that was the center. And this Galaxy Diamonds, it's, uh, it has a pigment to it but then it has these diamond effects in it. And what happens is the transparent will actually float up to the surface. The other drops down in and it creates this really nice effect. I had batched up another six ounces of resin. And here I'm laying down some of Black Diamond's Gold Ghost Pearl. It's a really lovely, lovely pigment. It has some nice shine in there and looks super up against that Galaxy uh, Diamonds from Resin Art. I ringed it with some of the Golden Autumn. Again, that is from Resin Art, and that is a luster pigment. And, I, you know, I don't know, maybe some people don't like browns, but this is a brown that I just love. And again, coming back in with yet another color from Resin Art, this is another luster. This is the Blushing Lily, and this one is... I can't tell you how pretty this is at this point. You can't tell, but you're going to see in the pictures what this stuff does. It has this purplish pink that floats through there. Now I'm ringing around the glass and I'm doing a really thin line here because it's really important that you don't overfill. If you overfill these sections, it's push, the resin's pushing up against that glass and you're going to have the color start weeping into the glass because it's only so deep and if you overfill it just wants to level. 
So I'm using my popsicle stick and I'm actually kind of thinning it out, spreading it so that I don't have it pushing into the glass. I don't mind if it mingles a little bit, but I've had in other works that it'll push so far in to there. It's, you know, because again, it's kind of like a mosaic. It's not tight fitting and it'll push up in there. So I didn't want that to happen. Took my time, used the popsicle stick, dragged it back. Now I'm warming up that resin with the torch real quick. And that looks good. Create a couple of effects with the popsicle stick dragging the brown. Then I use the uh, thin tip for my heat gun and I blow that color into one another. And the Galaxy Diamond, the yellow, lifts up and floats out across that pearl diamond. All right, another day, another color. We're back to using resin art. Again, this is one of the luster pigments. They give you, uh, from resin art, they give you those nice little plastic spoons. They're helpful in loading up your pigment in there. But again, these dry pigments, I filmed this one up close it's a little bit better view than the last one I did of their pigment, but it just blends right in with the resin. Beautiful shine to it. Now this cup, I have about four ounces of this clementine color. It's just a great fall earthy tone. It's got a nice shine to it. So I'm laying these areas out. There's really no rhyme or reason to it. I'm just kind of doing what I feel in the moment. I wanted to add a little bit more texture into the orange or the clementine as it's named. So I'm using these orange dyed quartzite chips and that just helps to add a little bit of dimension in some of the areas. They're pretty little things. I like them a lot. And I'm just going to do a couple more little spots. I was so pleased with the Black Diamonds Ghost Gold Pearl that I went back to it again. So I'm laying that right up against that clementine color. And now I'm using Perlex. This is their antique copper. And I went really heavy handed in uh, adding pigment on this, but it's well worth it. I really wanted it to be a dramatic contrast in here and get these dark colors going. I share a lot of the products that I use with you all because I find that it is difficult to find products that work really well with resin. I struggled in the beginning using acrylic paints and once I moved over to using pigments that were designed for resin, boy, it just made it so much better. So I'm going to just uh, put some codes in the description box here. I'm finishing up with the resin. I'm going to torch it and cover for the night after I remove tape. I used only three pens. My favorites are by Craftsmart. I get those at Michael's. They are a oil-based paint pen. And this gold is just so beautiful. They, I think they redid their formula because these are new. The case is new and uh, really, really pretty. So I use those Craft Smart. I use the gold and the copper, and I also use a Posca pen in the off white. Really pretty colors. Looks good. I waited several hours for the paint pens to dry. Then I batched up 24 ounces of resin because this is the clear coat now. So you can see I'm pouring it right on top of the glass areas. I want to make sure I get good coverage on that. You might also notice that I have a new tape dam on. I had removed the tape off of the sides and put a new tape dam on. I wanted to make sure that everything was going to be in good shape. This little handy dandy tool, this is a, um, it's used for ceramics and it's a silicone, a rubber silicone tip. So it's very flexible and works nice to manipulate the resin around into areas. And I also decided that uh, the center rings were looking a little too meh, silvery, whatever. So I tinted up a little bit of resin. I used a Pebeo Vitrol. It's a clear um, pigment and it's a brown. I think I added a little bit of uh, Liquitex ink in there to get the right brown. And yeah, what the heck, I even threw in a little bit of glitter in there to get a little bit of sparkle. 
So I completely covered the crystal uh, points there in the center. And uh, yeah, I'm much happier with that brown center there. So I'm just going to go around and make sure I get good coverage. And once that's done, I'm going to get out the big guns and give the whole board a nice torch with my propane torch. So I'm just using that tool to manipulate, make sure it's all covered up. Took my time and it's ready to go to bed underneath the cover. And I'll come back to remove the tape. I've waited about an hour and I'm removing my dust cover. This is my little trick. I just use a cheap plastic drop cloth and that's a styrofoam panel from construction for insulation. Here I am removing the tape dam going all the way around and then I use my heat gun and I try to keep it right at the edge. If I um, keep it there, I'm rolling that resin over. You can see it doesn't move too much until I start putting the heat gun on there. And that just gives it a really nice round over. And then it's time to set up the dust cover once again and say goodnight until tomorrow. Okay, it's the next morning and we're going to take off that dust cover and work at getting those sides cleaned off. We're going to remove the tape and I use my heat gun. I just warm it up a little bit. The resin is still soft. It's only the next day, so it's been about mm, maybe 14 hours since I did the clear coat pour. So you can see all I do is real quickly run that heat gun just to soften it, pull the tape, and it comes off with a really clean, sharp looking edge. I love doing it this way. Let's go outside and get a look. Wow, check this out. I am thrilled with this beauty. There isn't anything that I would do differently on this one. I am just thrilled. I hope you guys enjoyed my video and I hope I taught you a few tricks. Um, I really try to share a lot of information and tell you which products I like best. I can't tell you enough how good countercultures, uh, DIY, their artist resin is. It really performed well, well, well. And in this one with the resin art pigments, both the Galaxy Diamonds and the Luster, really nice effects. Black Diamonds, you know I like your stuff too. Anyway, I hope you guys found this interesting and you'll give it a try. Here's a couple of other videos that I've done in the past that maybe you want to check those out too. And I really want to tell everybody thank you so much for supporting my channel. I hope you appreciate this one took a course of, oof, I think it was a week and a half that I spent working on this one and a lot of editing. So thank you so much for your patience. Enjoy and I'll see you next time on Moon Cusser Art.